Hello students, I am Mrs. Aishwarya Raikar. Today we will learn about internet and internet working protocol. So first of all understand what is internet. So basically it is a short form for an interconnected network. That is nothing but interconnected network is nothing but internet. So it has become a vital part of our lives helping us connect with people worldwide. That is with the help of the internet we connect with people worldwide. So internet is made up of what a large numbers of independently operate network and it is fully distributed with no central control. Everybody has the equal access. And it is nothing but a simple wire that runs underground and allows two computer to communicate with each other. And basically a server is nothing but what a particular computer that is connected directly to the internet. Server is connected directly to the internet and when you talk about a specific web page they are nothing but simply the files that are stored on the server's hard drive that as a user when you browse any web page at that time you are requesting that web page to the server so every server has a unique protocol address or i can say an IP address. So IP addresses are essential for computers to find each other. So as a user you send a query to a web browser. Now whether you use a laptop, whether you use a smartphone that is or a tablet. Which kinds of web browser you use? Basically a most widely used web browser is Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox. So through that browser you send a query to the server and server just sends the response back to the web page. Now let's quickly see a history of the internet. So basically the internet was developed by Bob and Wendt in the year 1970 and they began the design of what we today know as internet. So who was the co-founder Bob and Wendt? So it was the result of another research experiment which was called as ARPANET that is nothing but Advanced Research Project Agency Network. Basically it was initially supposed to be a communication system for the defense team of the United States of America. A network that would also survive a nuclear attack. So eventually it has become a successful nationwide experiment packet network. So but when was the first internet standard started? So it is believed that on the 6th August 1991 when the world wide web opened to the public. So what is the date on which internet basically started? 6th August 1991. Remember it. Now how does the internet work? Just now we have seen the history of the internet. Now let's quickly see the working of internet. So basically we know that the computer we use every day they are called as what? Client. Because why do they call it as client? Because they are directly, indirectly connected to the internet through the internet service provider. So basically when we open a web page on our computer, we connect to the web page and then we can access it. So that is what I told you just now that whenever you want to get connected to the internet, basically you open a web page browser and then you browse through a web page and through that web page that query goes to the web server. So computer breaks the information into the smaller pieces called as packets which are reassembled in their original order. Now if we put the right address on the packet and send it to any computer which is connected as a part of the internet, each computer will figure out which cable to send it down next so that it would get to its destination as we are dividing the data into the packet so it will be a better job if we assign a address on that packet so that through that address the packet would know to which destination it has to deliver the packet so with several computers on the network it may create a confusion even with unique addresses because if there are n numbers of packets then it will create a confusion so basically this transfer of messages is handled by packet routing network and hence a router is required to set up. So in order to avoid that confusion we need a router. So basically router will do the job of routing as the name indicates routing that is nothing but route that is for available numbers of packets it will choose the best available route 
and it will route that packet from the source to the destination. Now, the transfer control protocol is another system that makes sure that no packet is lost or left behind because it might create a disrupted message at the receiving gate. So, TCP that is transfer control protocol is a system which will take care that no packet will be lost. Now, let's understand the steps which are required while transferring a message. So, first what will happen? Suppose let's take the example of two computers. So, computer 1 is sending a message by IP address to computer 2. In, at that time, the message sent by the computer 1 is broken into the small pieces. That is nothing but packets. So, the message sent by the computer 1 will be broken down into the small pieces. That's what I'll call packet. Now, these small pieces, that is packets are transferred concerning transfer protocol. So, the quality is maintained. So, transfer protocol will take care that the quality of that message will be maintained. And finally, these small pieces, that is nothing but packets, reaches the computer to and are reassembled at their IP address. So, these are nothing but the steps. Now, let us discuss the advantages of internet. So, internet has become a popular name since the introduction of its easy installation and setup. So, internet was first invented for only military and government users. Basically, it was just invented for military and government users. But now, it is found in every house across the world. So, let us quickly see the advantages of the internet. First, it is a great medium of sharing and has increased connectivity. Through the internet, I can sit at my home and I can connect to the people who are belonging to the different cities. So, that is the first advantage. With the internet, banking has now become easier. Long tiresome waiting time, waiting lines have been eliminated since the introduction of e-banking platforms. I can sit at, at my home and I can just check the statement of my bank account. Everything I can do, I can do a transfer, I can check, I can request a new ATM card, new checkbook. I don't have to go to the bank for that. E-commerce websites are one of the great advantages of the internet. One can buy groceries, clothes, household items and much more with the internet. Simply we are browsing the different shopping websites and we are at sitting at home, we are buying the groceries as well as clothes, everything on the single tap of our mobile. So, internet is also a great source of entertainment also. One can watch a video and movies, listen to music and play games without any hassle. Through the internet, you are enjoying mobile, uh, you are enjoying music, videos, anything. Social media platforms like your Facebook, Insta, Twitter have brought the world closer. The education system has also transferred. With the internet, any student across the world can connect online classes. That's what we have experienced in the pandemic period. That is the online sessions. Now, let's understand internet working. Just now we discussed about internet. Now let's understand what is internet working. So basically, how can I define internet working? Any interconnection among or between public, private, commercial, industrial or governmental computer network is defined as internet work. So there are three variants of internet work. First, extranet. Second, intranet. And third, internet. Let's explore three of them extranet so it is a network of internetwork that is limited in the scope of single organization or entity that is it is restricted to single organization but it also has limited connections to the network of one or more other usually but not necessarily trusted organizations or entities so technically it can be categorized as man WAN, that is MAN means metropolitan area network and WAN means wide area network. Metropolitan area network is I can use it in within a city and wide area network that is nothing but I can connect two cities even worldwide. Now intranet. So basically intranet is nothing but a set of interconnected networks using the IP that is internet protocols such as web browsers and FTP tools that is under the control of single administrative enti entity. So, the ad that administrative entity closes the intranet to the rest of the world and allows only specific users. So, intranet 
is nothing but which belongs to the specific organization there is a access restriction so most commonly an intranet is internal network of company or other enterprise that is in that company they have that access rights now the large intranet will typically have its own web server to provide users with browsable information internet internet is open to everybody that is world wide web so it consists of world wide interconnection of governmental academic public and private networks based upon the advanced research project agency network which is developed by arpa uh, of the us department of defense and also home to the world wide web and that's why internet has a capital i that is to distinguish it from the other generic internet works now what is internet working protocol so just now we have discussed that internet working is nothing but what a process or a technique i can say using which i can connect different networks by using intermediary devices such as routers or gateway devices so just now i have discussed about router with the help of the router the packet will get a right way to reach from its source to the destination so basically it ensures the data communication among the network and owned and private operated by the different entities using the common data communication and internet routing protocol so basically transmission control protocol slash internet protocol that is tcp ip is the most popular internet working protocol so let's emphasize more on tcp ip so basically tcp ip is communication protocol for the internet so as the name indicates it has two parts first is tcp and next is ip let's see tcp so tcp stands for what transmission control protocol so tcp provides me the reliable transport service so basically with the help of the tcp it ensures that the messages sent from the sender to receiver are properly routed and arrive intact at the destination so tcp transmission control protocol will take care that the speed and the pattern or i can say the sequence at which my packet is started from the sender that is from the source in the same sequence it should received at the receiver and until and unless it won't receive the acknowledgement from the sender receiver side it will not send back the next packet so basically tcp does what it converts the messages into a set of packets at the source which are then reassembled back into the messages at the destination and tcp operates with the packet switching techniques which is described as follows so basically what is that packet switching technique my message is divided into small packets and it contains address sequencing and error control information so basically this address is used to route the packet to its destination now as there are multiple users they can send and receive information out of order at the destination so this sequencing information in the packet is very important and that is used to reassemble the packets in order at their destination because there are n numbers of packets so that information is very important in order to reassemble those packets at their destination okay. side so the error control information is used to check that the packet arrived at the destination is same as that sent from the source so the error control information i need in order to check that the packet arrived at the destination it same at the sent from the source that is suppose in the transmission if my packet got corrupted so with the help of the error control information i can check that so that was about tcp now let's discuss about ip that is internet protocol so what is internet protocol it ip allows me allows different computers to communicate by creating the network of networks so basically ip handles what the dispatch of the packets over the network it also handles the addressing of my packets it ensures that the packet reaches its destination traveling through multiple networks with multiple standards so basically tcp ip protocol makes it possible for any pair of computers connected to the internet to communicate 
despite their hardware differences that is their hardware differences doesn't matter with the help of the tcp and ip it is possible for me to connect the different computers connected on the internet thank you